Hey, just wanted to do a quick video. If you're thinking about doing the um, headliner fabric in your um, Range Rover, this is a 2009 HSE um, Range Rover, I just pulled my headliner out. Let me explain what uh, is involved with that. It's not too bad, but you definitely want to set yourself up um, so that you're using a spare car in the process. What I'm doing is I'm removing all the headliner stuff and taking it to somebody, let them clean it, let them prep it all, um, get the appropriate fabric that matches, and um, then I can just do the install. <clears throat> so there's a few things that you have to do. One thing is when you pull out the headliner, you're gonna also wanna pull out um, the cover for the sunroof. Um, you're gonna wanna pull out the pillar covers. So you get the A, B, and C pillars, I believe they're called. Um, so a couple, couple things, just quick, quick, <clears throat> quick things. These rear pillar here, these need to come off. These are held in with snap grommets. Okay, so you want to get, uh, just get a cheap upholstery pry bar set. Um, that would be helpful. I got mine off Amazon. And you just stick it in there and just gently pry and then those will those will unclip. There's no screws that hold these in. Secondly, um, so there are speakers in these rear ones. So these are the clips that hold them in. And you can see it's got little springs that you just push in from the side and they pull straight out. Okay. Also... You'll need, um, there's a little luggage clip thing uh, towards the top. You'll need a, um, a Torx, small Torx set. Actually, to do this job, you're going to need um, a full Torx set. You'll need some metric sockets. You'll need a Phillips driver. Let me think, what else do you need? Yeah, anyway, those, those are the main things that you'll need. Coming to the side doors, what you got to do is fold your seats forward and then the the pillar here, you're not going to be able to get this um, actually and remove it from the car unless you disconnect the, the seat belt. So what I did was I disconnected the seat belt here. It's like a T50, I believe. So take an impact and a T50 and take that guy loose remove the a pillar or the c pillar and then put that back in um, this bracket actually you'll notice it's pointing against the wheel well of the truck when i actually install it it should be 180 on this so it's a not a huge thing but it will um it will make the the um seat belt point the right direction um as far as this you're gonna as you go through, there's going to be various things that are in the way, like in the center, you'll, you'll only be able to get so far and then you'll have to pry down. Um, actually this had four screws in it, come to think of it. So there's four screws. Those are also small T nuts or T, you know, torques. So there's four points that hold this up. Once you remove that, um, this whole center section, comes out um the sun or the headliner is held in partly by all this um rubber so it's a combination of this rubber covers and hardware so moving forward um on the sides you'll need to remove these these covers right here same thing, just pop the, move the seat forward, lift up this cover, and that's a T, I believe a 50. So impact that guy off, and then reassemble it after it's off. Um, the front covers have a, they, they do not just pry off. What you have to do on these ones um, oh, one other thing. See these tongs right here? That's actually what's holding the cover beside the doors. 
the passenger on the driver's door. So you actually have to remove it all the way down. So snap this, this black cover loose, snap the middle loose, wiggle these to separate these two, and then you can put this one back on afterwards. But this upper uh, half, basically it just drops and it clears these. Okay, so it's it's held on right here between pressure being pinched here and then the pins that are in here and here. And I believe at the bottom, it's kind of like slid in as well. In here, there's actually a screw that holds this in. It's a Torx. Again, to get to it, you have to use use like a um, a sharp object, like a, maybe a pocket knife. Um, somebody in another video said a jeweler's, like a flat screwdriver. I think it would be better to use something like... Um, like a pocket knife but something that's nice and rigid you have to get under the edge of that plastic uh cap there's one straight plastic uh, kind of like pin that kind of presses this in once you pull that cap off then you can get to the single torque screw that holds that on and once that's loose then this just slides up and out okay same thing on that side then you're gonna to get to a point where it still won't come out. And that's because um, the headliner is trapped with this retaining ring from the top. You Initially, you may be tempted to try to unscrew um, these screws. The problem is there's screws that go all the way around. And to get to these back ones, you have to actually take off the sunroof. It's not as bad as you might think. Um, the easiest way I think to do it is while the headliner's still in the car, open up the, um, the sunroof so that it's in the upright position. And then you'll see these little covers right here. What you do is pull this way towards inside and um, this rear pin that holds this little flexible cover um, is in a, a little open track on this side. So get it out of there gently. And then there's a single point of, of hinge right here. You pull those loose. You fold those up out of the way and you'll see three Torx screws or bolts that hold in the sunroof. Okay, there's a little bit of adjustability with the sunroof forward and backwards. So don't really worry about getting it right until you put you back your sunroof. But you're gonna take those three off. You're gonna take these three off. Once you do that, you'll be able to just slide the sunroof. It's just a sealed unit with a gasket around the outside and you'll be able to lift it up. And in my case, I just lifted it up, set it on the roof, and then I had clear access to all these screws. That's where you need a Phillips. I think it's a Phillips number two. You don't, you don't wanna strip any of those, so make sure that whatever Phillips you use sits in there nice and without any wiggle, and then gently remove those. And you'll be able to then um, lose the, um, you'll be able to lose the headliner. But you also need to um, have the, um, sliding um, sunroof, moonroof, whatever cover, um, you have to remove that as well. And there's four screws that hold that on. They're also, I believe, Torx. So, you know, it goes without saying, you wanna set all these nuts and bolts aside, get a magnetic tray to hold them on in, or a nice big bowl so you don't lose anything. Um, and once all that stuff is out, then um, all you got to do is um, open up the um, open up the little holder for your sunglasses, and you'll see two screws up in there, and that's they secure the this housing up to the chassis of the car. Once you loosen those, then you can take a pry bar around the perimeter of this console here, and you can loosen it. Um, you'll still have to disconnect these 
um, connections. This one is a, you can see it's got spring loaded little, you know, catches right here. So you have to push those in and then gently pull it out. Um, the one for the sunroof is here. Let's see if I have better light. Anyway, this guy, you just slide it, you just slide it upwards and separate it from that connection. It's like a six, six wire connection, something two, four, five wire connection. Okay. This guy right here, this is your microphone, I believe for your, um, so I just unsnapped it and kept it connected. And then this is your, um, I don't know what this thing is. Siemens. It's probably related to again, phone system or something. Um, but again, I left it connected. What I'm going to do, cause I want, I need to be able to drive this car still. So I'm just going to gather this stuff together and put a zip tie up here. And then basically then I'm not in a rush. I can, um, have somebody do my upholstery, do it right. Um, they can use a, you know, an adhesive gun and all the appropriate stuff. They can clean it all the way. Um, and then at my leisure, I can put it back together. So hope that helps. Um, I didn't see anything really that was helpful to me when, uh, I was thinking about doing this. So I figured I'd make this video. So you, there's no way of gluing that back on. And this itself is the headliner, this material. So once I get this totally off, then I'll take it to somebody. They'll scrub it, clean it all off. They'll use like acetone or some other chemical, get all that residue off, and then they'll apply a fabric that matches this. Pretty simple. All right, so this is what it is split open. You know, when I put this back together, I'm gonna have to epoxy. For one, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a lot of strength. Well, actually, I won't be able to get any strength here because this edge is gonna be fabric to fabric all in here, okay? So it's this, it's this kind of stuff right in here that's gonna hold it together. Um, and then, I don't know, something, maybe right along the seam. Um, but anyway, what I, what I should do though, is I'm going to take this. So in fact, I should even mark, see how this is passenger. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say just like this passenger. And then I'm going to say passenger. And that way, when I get this stuff back, so I'm gonna take these wires out. And this way, um, I can put it back together and it won't be a, an issue. But yeah, and that way I can take this wire, this, all this stuff out. So yeah, it's just got one wire from one side, one from the other. You can see how I did this. So you can stop at a certain point and figure out how it was done. Main thing is just make the connection. Okay, so there's there's a passenger one. And that's gonna go like that. So now it's on him to just Well, yeah, what he's going to do is actually he's just going to recover each half. And then I will then put it together. Exactly. So this actually needs to be marked. Okay, I'm going to say passenger. That's there. And then I'll say passenger. Um, half. Visor. Half 
Okay. So I'm going to say insert bar here and glue. So anyway, there's, there's part of it. All right. 2009 Range Rover HSE. This is what it's like without the headliner. So there's the connection for this rear pillar speaker. And this is what it looks like over here. Okay, so I just got my headliner recovered. I'm gonna put it back in. I figured I would just document what I see. So here's a connection up here. I don't know what that's for. It's probably actually, I would imagine it's for the windshield wiper maybe, I don't know. Um, there's the airbag. You can see the cartridge right there. So there's the cartridge right there. I gotta believe that's what that is because it says TRW. Um, so airbag. That's what the, so this is the sunroof. When the sunroof is open, it comes into this cavity here. So here's my connections. So this is where the dome light is for uh, over the driver's uh, head, driver and passenger. Um, so you can see there's a drain tube. It's got zip tie right there. And there's another one on this side. And those go, they must go down and then through the pillar, down through, or through the back somehow. Um, I don't really know. And then the, you can see there's another one on the front corner there and a front corner there. So they're plastic drains there. That curtain right there, where this rolled up with plastic, that's another airbag that goes over the over the driver's side and the passenger side. Um, so they've got to have right on the left side pillar. Um, you know, there's connections for that stuff. Over the center, obviously, you've got your connections for the sunroof uh, and so on. So I don't know. Oh, these brackets are for like little coat hanger thing so there's a plastic piece that goes in there you flip it up and then you can drive a screw in there uh, there's four connectors into plastic grommets that hold up the center piece here that has some lights in it and then up in front same deal to get the sunroof out um, or actually to get the headliner out you have to remove the sunroof so what you do is you put the sunroof in the up position so it's tilting up like it's just for air and then um, pull the key out and there's a dust guard like a, a pleated dust guard on the side there uh, you lift that out of the way carefully and there's three um, I think they're Allen or Torx but anyway you have to remove those three and then you can slide the sunroof out now there's a little adjustability to the sunroof so um and when you put it back in and you want to make sure that it's it's closed up in front mine's whistling right now a little bit as i after i put it back in temporarily because i didn't adjust it the other thing is the um the actual headliner is sandwiched between a metal like an aluminum ring from the top and then the headliner um, from the bottom. In order to get that off, you have to take the sun roof out because half the screws are, are um, covered by the sun roof, no matter what position it's in. Um, once you get that out, then you can also remove the moon roof from two screws or four screws from underneath their Torx, I believe again. So you definitely need a full complement of Torx because you're going to need Torx to get the, the seat belts out as well. These guys down in here, those are like T50s. Um, so you need a socket wrench with an extension and a T50. And then once that's loose, then you can pull your 
your pillar out because this seat belt goes through a hole in the pillar does the same thing in the front seats so front and back seats uh, you get that same issue um, the back pillar is just snapped in place I don't think there's I don't think there's any screws that held that in um, it's just tedious to get it out um, and when you put your new headliner in um, you're gonna want to you know have the headliner that's been reupholstered wrapped in plastic and then you can jimmy it in here you can see I've got the seats folded forward but I'm gonna I'm gonna slide it all the way in and before just before I'm actually ready to install it that's when I'll start removing the plastic um, and you gonna want to have some gloves on some you know plastic gloves because you don't want the oils from your skin uh, from your fingers going on to the newly uh, refinished headliner so at the front of the end of the car this is what you see after the headliners out so that's that's what's behind the um, handle on both sides you can see it's basically just a plastic plate on top of sheet metal there's the curtain for the airbag um, there's one screw that holds in this um, side and uh, this a pillar cover um, you've got to pry out that little cover that says um, airbag and it's a little tedious to get it out um, so you're gonna need something flat but stiff to get in there um, once it's out see that connection that's barely out of that hole right there at the visor that's the connector for the lighted um, mirror in the visor this one I'm gonna have to fish out because uh, it retracted in there when I was doing it so I'll have to get up there with a the little bent wire and find it uh, I'm sure it's right there but in fact it's probably connected right to here Sure enough, there it is. So this goes up through the this goes up through this hole and then comes out here. So I could, I mean, if I really had to, I could, uh, you know, go like this. Well, it's just as easy. I just go like this, fish around. There it is. So no big deal. Oh, I'll find it. Um, here's the switch for the sunroof. Um, you have to disconnect it in order to get this console out, but. Yeah, I reconnected mine because I had to close up my sunroof because it started to rain. Um, there's all these connections. There's a ground right there. That, I believe, is a motor for the sunroof. It's the only thing that makes sense right there. So it's a Siemens 67.616910154. And it says Siemens below 115. 852 I don't know but that sure looks like a motor for uh, for a sunroof you can see I've got duct tape here when I was driving the car around it while the upholstery was being done I had to go on a long drive and uh, this thing rattles so if you do want to drive the car you want to get the sunroof back in snug it up um, there's those little fluted you know, those spread when the car is, uh, when the sun is being used. So anyway, uh, I'm just documenting this because I didn't see anybody do any videos on this subject and I just thought it would be helpful. All right, when the time comes to reinstall your headliner, what you wanna do obviously is work in reverse order. And what that means is that your, your sunroof has to come off first. So loosen those flexible pieces and use a, I forget what T this is. This is like a T20 maybe, 20 or 25, I can't remember. But um, you need to get to those screws. So it's, it's helpful to remove the sunroof before you get your headliner in here. Don't ask me how I know this. Once that's out, then what you're gonna wanna do is put the headliner in and then before you completely seal it up, 
um, after you've sandwiched the headliner um, with its you know upper ring which is held in by Phillips screws um, uh, before you put the sunroof back on put the moonroof in and those use four bolts that are like this this is what they look like kind of flat washer integrated with a bolt okay so you can see if I'm this far uh, what I did was there's two screws or two bolts inside the cup holder that once you press this console in and screw those in that's what supports the whole headliner in the front okay and I don't know if my upholster got that on there or what but I gotta see if I can brush that out a little bit it's a little bit of a mark I know it wasn't from me because I noticed it after I took the plastic off anyway <laughs> here's the thing you know, there are times when you might have to move the sunroof um, mechanism forward and back. Here's something to be aware of though. This little spring-loaded lid right here is gonna prevent the sunroof from full um, motion um, when the sunroof's off. So if you're finding that it's not coming all the way back up, you're gonna have to get your hand in there, maybe with a, a like a, piece of pry tool and just gently pull it down out of the way and then work the sunroof control to move it forward once it's clear in the front no problem but you have to be able to slide your moonroof cover hardware far enough that you can get your screws in into these holes and that's going to be the next step is to get that moonroof cover in um so while my wife runs up and gets that, because it was not included in our package of stuff, I'm gonna continue. And what I'm doing is, aside from making my connections, I'm also rolling this weather strip and tucking in my um, ceiling, my whatever, my headliner, there you can see. So, Boom, I got a pillar that still needs to go in. Um, I duct taped this guy so that I wouldn't, it wouldn't go back up into the hole and get lost during install. Same thing with that one, probably a good idea. Um, but anyway, it's coming along. All right, so other than the, the visors, which I have to glue back together, uh, I do have the headliner in all the clips and all this stuff. Um, one thing to uh, just one little tip is when you're doing this B pillar, the one beside the the um, passenger and the driver's side, you, if you're anything like me, you're really going to struggle with this. Uh, the trick is. Basically, you want to pre-assemble this whole side. So you have to take off, you have to take off the, uh, the black part, connect it to the upholstered part, and then from the drivers, from the front door, basically you want to wedge it in there and get it started on this pin closest to you. And, uh, and then you just work it in there and just eventually it slides in there. If you try doing it from any other angle, good luck. Uh, so you will need a T50 to get the, the, um, the bolt off because you got to pass the seatbelt through the upholstered section. Okay, so this is the significant or the importance of labeling stuff when the guy worked on my things um he erased some he was cleaning my parts obviously something got mismarked the, also i didn't have my hardware marked that's really important you got to mark i would say mark it somewhere on the hinge in in sharpie and use a sharpie on your visors and you won't reverse them like i did 
But uh, anyway, you know, I pried them apart. They stayed together. The fabric bonds really well with um, hot glue. The plastic, not so much. So when I put it together this time, what I'm going to do is I am going to use hot glue just to pretty much spot it. But to make sure that it stays strong, I'm going to use a bead of PL, um, which is... Uh, polyurethane glue on the plastic stuff and that's going to make it I mean I'm never going to be able to take it apart so it's it's now or, or never whatever that's what it looks like when you have made the main visor twice yep uh huh